You have asked me so often, Luise, how do you come up with your ideas and where do you get your inspiration from? Some of you have written below my past videos that you would love to spend one day in my brain. <laughs> you are so cute. Always when I read such a comment, I'm like, oh my goodness, these people out there are so cute. So first of all, Thank you so much for your sweet comments. I mean, not only that one that I've mentioned, but all of your comments are always so sweet and so heartwarming. And that gives me so much motivation uh, to go on with this crafty things here. That's unbelievable. But I also have to say this question where I am getting my inspirations from is sometimes not so easy to answer. The same with today's project. <laughs> And I think you will laugh in a second about me because today's project was inspired by candy corn. I have my Wikipedia opened here on my phone because I heard about candy corn in an English speaking video a few uh, days ago. And I was like, what the heck is candy corn? And someone was eating such a little tiny thingy, this candy corn. And I was like, what the heck is that? And in Austria, we don't know candy corn. Perhaps you come from America and you know this. Perhaps you come from somewhere else. So I would like to try to translate what Wikipedia sees, uh, says about candy corn. So perhaps you also don't know it. I have never eaten this, but this looks so yummy. <laughs> This, what's said here on Wikipedia, is so interesting that I s thought that we can perhaps make some candy corn birds today. So that's today's project. But before we can start, I would like to translate this for you. So this says that candy corn is an American sweet thingy. And uh, the American people eat that in autumn. And especially when the Halloween season is, you know, there. Um, this candy corn is a triangle and it has three colors. So you can see that here on this picture, it has this yellow, the orange and white. Looks really, really interesting, by the way. We don't have candies like this in Austria. Um, and... The taste is some kind of butter, honey and vanilla. So some kind of a mix of these three, butter, honey and vanilla. So here are some informations that are not so interesting, but that what is written here on the very bottom was really interesting for myself and for my artsy work, I would say, because um, this says that candy corn in America is really popular But um, some people like it really, really much and the others are hating it. So it's, in German, it's polarisierend. P polarization, is that an English word? Hopefully. So that means some of the people really, really love candy corn and the others are hating it. And there's nothing in between. And sometimes I have the feeling That's the same with junk journaling and especially with my work. <laughs> Sometimes I have the feeling um, that either the people love me and love what I do or they hate me and they hate what I do. <laughs> so I thought, um, even if I haven't known that before I've read it here on Wikipedia, that matches this project really, really well. And that's a really interesting information. <laughs> okay, so I would like to make some candy corn birds today and for that i would like to use this die cut set here this is by zizix and tim holtz and these are those silhouette birds these are really really versatile i would say you can cut these out with your die cut machine in various colors and i really really love these birds uh, but please 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 don't freak out if you don't have this set You can uh, create a similar project like I'm doing it today with just cutting some silhouettes of birds with your scissors. I will explain that to you in a second. Uh, this technique that I'm showing you today is possible also when you don't have a die cut machine or you don't have die cuts. I'm using the die cuts because for me 
it's really easy uh, to cut that out. I'm not such a patient fuzzy cutter. So uh, for me, this is the most easiest way. And I have so much fun with those birds and with die cuts at all. I, I was not this die cut person in the past, but in the meantime... I really enjoy using these things and including them into my projects. But as I said, you don't need this. But I will show you my birds with the die cuts and I'm explaining you how you can do that without the die cuts. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to cut these out in black. I've already done that here because I think all of you know how to cut that out in black. So this is uh, just black scrapbooking paper. This is approximately 200 GSM, I would say, so a little bit sturdier so that the end result gets really sturdy as well so that we can include that into our junk journal collages or onto our junk journal pages without any problems that something is too flimsy. So um, I have cut out uh, these nine birds, so one of each shape one time in black. And I would like to use these as a shadow later. So uh, I will make my candy corn color on another paper. That means we are going to need, next to our black die cuts, uh, some kind of a, yeah, a little bit stronger paper and a paper that's good for the medium that you want to use. So let me explain that. This is... Uh, a paper where you can use dry and wet mediums, for example, watercolors or these pencils or something like that, that you can uh, blend with water. You could use brushes on that, acrylic paints or any other kind of wet medium. This paper has 200 GSM as well, so that when we put one layer of this paper to this layer, we would have two layers and each layer has 200 GSM. Perhaps you would like to have that in mind. If you want to imitate this and you want to choose your paper, then I think it would be good to have a little bit heavier paper. So approximately 200 GSM per layer would be good. And I'm choosing this because I want to use some inks today. But of course, you can use any other medium that you want. Uh, perhaps you can guess what I'm doing now. <laughs> Take out my Distress Oxide inks because this is my absolutely favorite medium and I would like to use these today. But you can do this project with any other wet mediums that you can imagine or even dry mediums would work. Um, you could use some watercolor, some acrylic paint, some brushes, or you could use colored uh, pencils or something like that. Uh, you could even use paper strips yeah, and glue them down. That would also work. Anything that has the right color would work for our candy corn birds today. So what I'm going, going to do next is I'm taking my birds and I'm placing them here so that I can see how much of this paper I will need. And I think we can make two rows of the birds. So this is just for my orientation so that I don't waste any ink or paper. So I'm, uh, I have tried that out for the German video, so I know that I know uh, that I need two rows here. But if you don't know what you are doing, then or how much space you would need, then just lay your birds to the paper, approximately like this, so that they are standing in the right direction. So that means you want to have your birds like this and not not like this because otherwise the colors later on would be not correct i mean even you you could do that i mean i'm just thinking about that you could do that also oh my goodness Whew, oh my goodness we could also do that in the other direction that would look perhaps also cute let's decide that later so uh, i've just realized that it doesn't matter in which direction you put your birds but what you should have in mind is because of time saving issues <laughs> if i put one row of birds here and one here then i know that i need my colors for the candy corns two times one time here and one time here if you have more birds, you would need more paper. If you have only five birds, it would be enough to put your color here. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and now 
um, I'm taking one of the birds or you could even let them uh, be there I mean all of them um, then we can just get an orientation how um, big we want to have our color here so the top of the candy corn is white so that means that the top of our paper has to be white as well I'm uh, just making a little sign here so that I know that this will be white um, and I want to have a part of the head be white later then the middle of the candy corn is orange I'm writing O for orange and the rest I mean the bottom the feet would be yellow so I guess that I want to have the yellow a little bit bigger uh, like this then you can take this here as an orientation for the second row and in the middle there will be nothing here it starts white again then we have the orange and the yellow here on the bottom and now I want to apply my ink and I want to have a really straight line in between of the colors because the candy corn has that as well it's not like one um, color goes into the other but it's a really straight line and I want to try that out here on my paper as well and I'm using this masking tape this is just a regular masking tape as you can see that sticks really really well and with some papers there's the problem that it sticks too much and that when you later on tear it off you tear some of the paper off as well and of, co and of course we don't want that we don't want to destroy our paper so I'm taking this and I'm just uh, putting that to my t-shirt you, you can't see that sorry but this way do, can you hear that I'm putting it there a few times so that it gets not so sticky anymore uh, the little um, things from the t-shirt go to the tape of course you can also use um, a, t um, a kitchen towel or something like that and then you can um, just make this a little bit less sticky just by putting that to a kitchen towel and I'm going on with all of these strips I want to start with the yellow so that means I'm putting one strip to the white area that that will become white later and one here to the orange so that the yellow is here and I can color that in and um, a good idea is to press the tape here a little bit more so that we get a straight line and uh, I'm trying to get the tape relatively straight to my paper here so that I have a straight line here then it's an e you have an easier job to cut your die cuts later when this is relatively straight because later on we have to place the die cuts into exactly the same uh, the right position sorry and that's easier when you um, have this relatively straight so now we have this area where we want to put the yellow and here for the second row of the birds we also want to put the yellow and for yellow I have chosen wild honey that's a relatively orange orangey yellow but I think that that looks really really cool uh, for this project and this is actually for me a candy corn color even if I haven't seen any candy corn in reality but <laughs> I'm going here over this area with my brush and applying the ink here and I'm trying to get this relatively intensive so that I have much ink here on my paper if you want to use watercolor or acrylic paints of course you can also do that then you can just take a paintbrush and go over this area that we want to make yellow <clears throat> and when I have that we can let that dry here at the moment it's really really hot uh, it's really hot weather and this dries really quickly so I don't have to use a heat gun or something like that now but um, if you are not sure then just dry that with your heat gun and then go on now I'm taking um, a water spritzing bottle and I'm spritzing 
spritzing some water, but I'm pressing not too much. I don't want to have this. That, that was an accident. I want to have these effects here. Can you see that here? The oxide ink is already reacting and um, the water is doing its job. And now when we have that, we can wait for a second or two or three or five. <laughs> and then we take a dry kitchen towel. Please don't be confused. This is dry, but it has already the wild honey ink on it. That doesn't matter. If you have another color of oxide ink on your dry kitchen towel, please take a new one so that you don't accidentally mix your colors here because this is wet and this is water soluble, of course, what's in here. And you don't want to mix up your colors. As you can see, we have a really cool effect already here. This starts, the oxidation is, is already starting. And now I want to lift that up, uh, the uh, ink that is here too much I mean not too much but that's <laughs> you know in the water and now this gets relatively light as you can see uh, and that's perhaps a little bit too light for our candy corn color but I want to show you a really cool trick that you get this color not so um, not so boring I don't have the right word what's in my head in German. So um, we don't want to have too much contrast in our colors because the candy corn also doesn't have that. In the candy corn, there's uh, yellow, red and white and nothing like these artsy tiny things. Do you know what I mean? But I want to have this a little bit artsy. But this contrast is way too much. So I will dry that and then I will... Um, show you a little trick how you can make that really really interesting okay so this is totally dry now i've just dried that with my heat gun and now i'm taking uh, this plastic thingy here you could also use an acrylic block and then i'm taking my wild honey ink directly from the ink pad and i'm putting some here and i'm spritzing relatively much water and now i'm taking this kind of brush I'm using this for splattering I would suggest use your favorite splatter brush yeah <laughs> because that's the easiest way and now I'm trying to get some splatters to these lighter areas not everywhere yeah it's perhaps from your angle it it looks like it is everywhere but I'm trying to get that mainly there where those light areas are of course something uh, is spritzing to the other areas as well but that's not the problem that's art <laughs> and uh, then I will dry that as it is without lifting anything up again if you want to do this with acrylic paint uh, for example uh, then you could just um, mix your color that you have with some darker color of the same color to get a little different shade of the color if you're using watercolors you could put some salt to the watercolor while it's wet to get a similar effect and I say similar because it's only similar of course a different medium makes a different effect uh, but it would be a similar effect that this is not such a you know not only one color here but that it looks a little bit interesting and uh, especially a little bit artsy and when we have that, I will go over that with my heat gun as it is and dry that. Now it looks like this. And here you can see one reason why I am so in love with Distress Oxide inks. We get this really cool effect with only one color. Here are so many shades of orange. Um, or actually, this is a yellow, I would say. I mean, orange yellow. Call it as you want it. Uh, but <laughs> here we have so many different shades of the same color. And this looks so interesting. Um, and for me, Distress Oxide inks are one medium that can reach this in a really, really easy, fast. And, you know, it's a time-saving thing also to, to create such things with, with uh, uh, so less effort. Yeah, so that's a reason why I love these inks so much. And by the way, <laughs> have you realized 
that we've used wild honey and the people say that honey is one of the tastes that candy corn has uh yeah <laughs> it says butter honey and vanilla and this is some kind of coincidence but i really love such coincidences is that the plural hopefully when the color that uh, that i have used i mean this is just the name of the color yeah so when i smell or taste this it doesn't taste like honey i mean tim uh <laughs> perhaps that would be an idea for the future to put some smell to the ink pads i've i've thought that so often that would be so great if the ink pad would smell like the color is named i mean yeah yeah forget it <laughs> so it's only the name of the color of course but i really like when those things are happening because this is now something that touches me do you know what i mean this is wild honey and the candy corn tastes like honey yeah. and the candy corn is a candy <laughs> so that's be uh, that's why we are using candied apple <laughs> that's also coincidence we are going to need a really reddish orange and for me candied apple can uh, bring uh, bring that to us what am i doing here so uh, now i have to take off this where we have to put the orange now and now i will do something i will because i have learned something when i have recorded my german video so normally uh, i mean i've done that in the last video uh, in the german video Normally, you would use a new strip of masking tape now because when you go over this with your candied apple brush, the blending brush, then this ink would go to this area because they are mixing up. But now I want to try exactly that. So uh, normally you would say, oh, I don't want to mix up my colors. But in this case, I'm hoping the following thing. So I have um, experienced in my other video, when I use only candied apple, then it looks a little bit too red. And now we have the following problem. Um, if I want to have the same effect on each of these areas, <clears throat> then I would have to uh, use the same technique to reach that so that means when i now put the next color there i have to use the same blending brush um like i have used before i can't use uh, my ink directly from the ink pad i can't go over that with with directly with the ink pad you know like this that wouldn't be possible if i want to reach the same effect like here i can't put that to an acrylic block and put that here that would be a totally other look later of this area than of this so i have to use the brush so i can't mix my colors i can't mix candied apple with wild honey to get a more orange color now but uh what will happen and that's something that i don't know because i haven't tried it because in the german video i have done it differently i'm taking candied apple now and my candied apple brush and then i'm trying to smear the wild honey to the candied apple area so later on i can uh, clean the brush that would be no problem but i'm trying to mix that up now and that seems to work a little bit Ay, ay, ay. but not so not so well as i thought i mean that means you can use your masking tape again but that works not so well okay so we take the wild honey brush and we will go over that area here a little bit to get that a little bit more orange in between of that i'm just rubbing my brush to a paper towel so that i don't get ink from the candied apple to my wild honey ink pad and that's more the color that I wanted to have. I've lear just learned that in the German video it was not orange enough. So this is great, I think. In the camera it looks even way more orange <laughs> than on my paper here. But we will do that here for this uh, area as well. And of course if you are using um, watercolors 
or something like that something that you can mix better than inks of course you can uh do that before you apply it you can just mix your inks together like you want uh, your paints together like you want them uh, for example acrylic paints or watercolors you can mix the right orange and then just apply that here like this that looks really fantastic okay so then here we are going to spritz some water and then we will see what's happening here and what color we get that's a surprise for me now as well oh yes oh yes oh that's fantastic <laughs> okay so i think i want to dry this as it is because here my uh, splatters from the water are a little bit more delicate so i will just dry that okay so here we go now we have this and i'm really happy with this and by the way when we now take off this masking tape don't throw away the masking tape um uh, okay so that worked not so well here uh, i had the same problem with the other video as well but i don't care about this we are making art Normally, I would love to have a really straight line here. So these areas are not so nice, but yeah, let's see. We can we can also make something beautiful out of such things. And um, don't throw away these things here. Just let them dry completely. And then you can uh, just stamp to this and make a really cool own design for some kind of a washi tape. I mean, this is this... Um, uh, masking tape is feels nearly like washi tape so you could stamp to this you could leave it as it is so i like to put that to a piece of acetate or something like that and now i'm just uh, putting it here to my shelf because there's a great place for that <laughs> but later on i can use that for some other projects and uh, yeah why wasting the ink when it's here and you could use it for something else so now we have this candy corn colors then we can take this off and now we can take our die cut machine or of course you could also make a template by yourself if you want to make a template because you don't have a die cut machine or you don't have the die cuts then you can just uh, take a magazine for example cut out a bird and then just make a template from a piece of a little bit thicker material like a scrapbooking paper or something like that and then you can just um, place your template on top of this trace around with a pencil and then just cut it out with your scissors and if you want to use the die cuts of course it's nearly the same so I have my magnetic platform here. Perhaps you know that, that for the Big Shot and perhaps some other die cut machines as well. I don't know that because I only have the Big Shot. There's this magnetic platform available and that's really helpful for cutting out things like this project. So I have the magnetic platform, then the transparent platform. I can place my paper here and now I'm able to put my birds here where I want them. And they can't move because of the magnets in this platform. So I can decide how much white I want to have on the head, how much orange I want to have on the belly and so on. So that I can place them like this. And now I am also trying uh, to get them straight. Yeah. So in the beginning we said we could also do that the other way around. But I'm actually not sure if that would look great. Shall we do one? I mean, I know how it will look in the end because I've done that for the German video already. And I know it's so strange. And that's this thing with being in my head. That's not, you know, it's not a good idea to be in my head because now I have the problem that I want to try it out, but I don't want to mess it up. So <laughs> we are going to do one uh, in this direction so that the strips later are like this and the rest we are doing like I have planned it because I'm sure that that will look very cute and really cool but of course you can try that out with different variations you can 
uh, also vary the colors if you don't like candy corn of course you can also uh, choose other colors um, I mean <laughs> I don't even know if I would like candy corn but because I haven't tried it yeah <laughs> because it's not available here I don't know how it tastes but this was in my head and I thought these tiny candy corn thingies look so cute what if those colors would be on these silhouette birds and that was in my head and I can't explain you why or how or uh, I don't know how uh, how it got there but I wanted to try that out and this is so cool this is just cute so uh, until now it's not cute but it will become cute in a second this seems to be not enough one two three four five six seven eight nine yes we have all nine I thought there's one missing Ah, that's because I have put this in the other direction. That's probably the reason. So let's try a second one in that direction. I think this would look cool. That's like like this. And it's really it's um, a good training for your brain, I guess, when you put your things to the um, die cut machine. And you try to imagine what will come out later. Because now you can't see that so clearly. You have to imagine that. And for me, that's a really, really good training for my brain. I mean, that sounds a little bit crazy. Because we are trying to make something cute and a little piece of art. But for me, that's also a brain training. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too weird. And now it looks like this. Isn't this just cute? I'm so in love with this. And uh, this paper that you have here, of course, you uh, don't throw that away, please. Because you can use that, of course, uh, for something else. This uh, row of the birds now is a little bit weird because this one and these both are in the wrong direction. But let me show you the one from the German video. Here I have put... You can't see that, sorry. Here I, I have put everything, I mean all of the birds, in a row so that they are standing in the same direction. That looks more like a row of birds, yeah? Here it looks like three of them are in the wrong direction. But you could also cut pieces of that or if you want to do it like I have shown you a second ago, then of course you could also use this negative thing for something else. You could now back this with, for example, some black paper. That would look really, really cool. You could also cut out more of the black ones and then just put them in here. Imagine that they all are in here. I think I will do that. I mean, that looks cool. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> now it's probably not a candy bird anymore. These are the candy birds and this is the negative. This looks lo looks not like candy corn. The background, yes, but the bird itself is not a candy corn bird anymore. I know. But what I, I'm trying to say is don't waste your material that you have made here. You can use that for pockets, for belly bands and for other things. Then we can take a glue and I would suggest to take a glue that has this small opening here at the top. The small um, tip, is that the right word? <sighs> and then we can glue these together. So now I want to use my black birds as a shadow for the candy corn birds. That means I'm taking this, searching for the right one here. That's this one. And then I put some glue here. And I'm gluing this down, but not exactly. So now it's glued not so exactly so that you have this little shadow there. And this black shadow, I think that makes a really, really big difference, especially if you want to include this into collages. Then that looks really, really cool. Um, but of course, you could also take them as they are if you think uh, for your project uh, two layers would be too thick or there can be other reasons why you need those birds uh, with made out of thinner paper uh, but I guess if you are into junk journaling and you want to make collages then this is a good thickness <clears throat> and especially if you want to make 
some of these for your stash and you want to use them later and not immediately when you have uh, made them perhaps you want to build up your stash and make some of them then it's good when they are a little bit sturdier and you could have them for a longer time in your stash without ruining them so i will now glue all of these together in the same way and oh by the way i'm uh making the shadow not always at the same side of the bird so here for example i'm putting that to the top and to the left i guess if i can manage that yeah <coughs> if i can manage that like this <coughs> so that i have some <coughs> variations so for example here we have the shadow on the top and on the left so that means the light is coming from here where my thumb is on this there's the shadow in the other direction so for this bird the light comes from here normally for such abstract and more artsy die cuts it's perhaps not so important to think about where to put the shadow but uh, please imagine you would put those birds into a collage with, for example, a paper doll or a cutout from something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> something, for example, a photo. You have cut something out from a photo and um, on that photo there you can see light and shadow and perhaps you want to include that's not oh, louisa take the right one please <laughs> oh my goodness. okay so for example you have cut out something from a photo or from somewhere else where the light um is important for that project that you want to use this cutout. Um, then, of course, uh, it can be important where the shadow of the bird is uh, uh, as well. So uh, if the shadow on the bird then is in the, right, uh, in the wrong spot, that would look really crazy. If you look for a more, I would say, realistic collage uh, that place with light and shadow perhaps you know what i mean perhaps not sorry uh yeah so now uh i guess that these buddies could look way more cute if we want if we would put some eyes to them and i have made the experience that <laughs> sometimes for some projects um, putting eyes to these silhouette birds is not a good idea. That makes them sometimes too cute, too kitschy in some cases. But sometimes you need the eyes to bring character to them. And suddenly the eye makes the whole difference. Um, and now we have them. <laughs> and now I would like to show you how you could include them into your journal. So I will just uh, give you some examples. I will not glue anything now because I don't have a journal at the moment that has the right color palette for the candy birds. But uh, I have this journal and I thought, why not trying to um, put them in several places and see how that will look. So uh, I... I have to say this would be a really colorful project okay so that's a little bit too far away if you would put those birds into such a journal with these colors <laughs> that would be really aggressive and really colorful and really crazy but sometimes those crazy projects could also be really cool i mean <laughs> do you agree with that i i think so that it is like that so, for example, on fabric, that would look really cool. And that's also the reason why I have made them a little bit thicker. Now they are really sturdy. 
you can't bend them. I mean, don't drive over them with your car, then then they are dead. But <laughs> you can't ruin them by by just uh, touching them them and pressing them down. If I if I would put some glue here and glue one of them down here, I could um, press that without ruining it or without bending it. So that's the reason for the thickness. And I think even in such a colorful journal, that could look really, really cool. In this journal, I have some more neutral pages. And um, you will see in a second that this would work as well. So this journal is decorated. Yeah, so I haven't planned to put the birds in here. So I have to make it like this so that it makes sense to you. Because this would absolutely make no sense. Nobody would glue the bird here. But if you put it like this and you would imagine that the butterfly is not here and the page is ending here then you can see that these would look really cool on a neutral background uh, i mean neutral uh, color wise yeah so it, it really much is going on here it's a really loud background but uh, the colors would match really well to these candy corn colors and um sometimes i also think uh, let's take this one here. Sometimes I also think I'm crazy because I love to combine different die cuts with each other. This butterfly here in the background has probably not the right color because this purple is really pastel and this is too intensive for my taste to combine this. But please imagine this would be um, just red or turquoise or something like that or white. Then it would look really cool to combine these both. Do you agree? I really, really like that. Even if this butterfly and the bird don't belong together. But for me, it's really, really <sighs> some kind of meditation to to combine those um, die cuts with each other especially butterflies with something else for example look at this and no, this is not the right one this is not the right one but this one look at that i mean what is that is that crazy or is that cute is that already too much what do you think about that? Especially with this stamping here going on really much in this little collage. But I'm so in love with these things. I, I can't tell you that. And there are so often so many discussions about what can I put into my junk journal. Um, a junk journal originally is made out of junk, of course. Yeah, so the scraps that I have here are junk. This paper comes, for example, from a paper bag. That is junk. This was a packaging paper. That is junk. This bird is no junk. Of course not. The the butterfly here in the background also, that's no junk. But when it makes me happy, I think that's the best reason that I can combine that here. And we've talked about that several times and I think there's always this discussion, and I think there will this discussion will be there forever. Uh, what am I allowed to put into a junk journal and what not? And I think we can't stop that, but perhaps you agree with me that it doesn't matter what you want to put in there when it makes you happy. <laughs> For example, here, and that's some kind of a similar example for what I want to say. This is a digital printable paper from my Etsy shop. This is from the Crafty Critters set. I will also link that down below for you. This is from the ephemera pack and I've glued this tag so that it is a belly band. I've used this leftover die cut. This comes from the Tim Holtz uh, Wildflower Stamps collection. And I've just uh, had this little leftover. The stem is missing here and I've just glued that here because I thought that looks interesting with this daisy and when we now take a bird perhaps this one this um, it's not so good because it covers up this little fly here but perhaps this one 
I don't know, but but this looks just gorgeous in my eyes. And for me, this is junk journaling to combine different things, no matter if it is junk or new or whatever. I have a die cut here. <laughs> this is some junk from a book. This is from an old book that has fallen apart. A map <clears throat> that was, hmm, don't know from where it comes. Um, some digital paper. This leftover from the die cut. Stamping. Is, is stamping junk? I mean, how many people are stamping to their junk journals? And no one is crying or, or screaming. <laughs> I mean, screaming that uh, he or she has stamped to, to the junk journal. I mean, stamp to your junk. Yeah, but the stamp is new as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you have bought the stamp. You haven't. You can't found. Uh, you can't find any stamps in the trash can. Eh? Yeah. So for me, combining those things is what junk journaling makes so interesting and so special. And to everyone out there who is thinking, what can I put into my journal? Can I do that? This is new. Can I tear that? Can I cut it up? Please do it. If if it makes you happy, then just please do it. Okay. So these are just some examples. I think I will um, go through this journal and find some other places where I can uh, put those candy corn birds i've just i just wanted to show you one last example because this is really crazy here's much purple and you think can that uh can that work and i think it can work now it's really colorful i know but this this is junk journaling this puzzle of different pieces this looks so cool to me and in this journal, there are several spots where i could put those birds um and i will uh, try to place them here without gluing them and then making some photos and then I will post that to my Instagram I will post that into my Facebook group and to my Facebook page if you want to see that everything is linked down below so that you can check that out um, because I mean I can't glue them here and show you the photos or the the journal because these are not meant to go into this journal uh, because I don't want to have this journal too busy and the birds are too much for this journal, for my plan with this journal. Uh, but you can find several photos on my social media. That's what I'm trying to say. And of course, Candy Bird is a Halloweenish candy as well. Candy Bird? I'm saying Candy Bird. <laughs> candy Corn <laughs> is a Halloweenish candy so of course you could also put that into a halloween project where is my black here i have i've lost my black i think he has one black spot let's take the green green is also halloween isn't it so you could also put that into a halloween project because that would match really really well with this idea behind the birds so just take some dark green or dark purple or dark black all of these halloween colors or orange and red you could also uh, place them to an orange and red uh, background and make this more matchy matchy and then you would have really cute focal points for your halloween projects i hope you like this idea see you the next time bye bye <laughs>